for joining us for this very special program honoring the legacy of KOAT's president and general manager, Mary Lynn Roper. An impressive career spanning more than 41 years, and tonight we're sharing her story, one filled with many firsts. So let's talk about those first. When most of us were thinking about starting high school around 14 years old, Mary Lynn was already working, starting a long, impressive, amazing career, one that only took her out of her beloved New Mexico for a short period of time. So let's begin by showing you her historic career. Most 14-year-olds only dream of getting their first job. Mary Lynn already had one in her hometown of Raton. I had the coolest job that there was. I was a disc jockey. KRTN was only the beginning. She was good at it, but when it came to broadcasting, she wanted more. When did you get the TV bug? I got the TV bug. Actually, I was in Albuquerque working for All News Radio. But the owner decided to switch formats, so he laid everybody off. Well, almost everybody. So he called me in aside from everybody and said, you know, we'd love to keep you on. You're a good worker, so you can be a disc jockey for the new country and western station. Remember, Mary Lynn wanted to take a different path. A so her answer? No, I'm a news person. I'm a journalist, so <laughs> no, I'm not doing that. So Mary Lynn was unemployed, but not for long. She got two job offers. One is a news director for a radio station, and the other? KOAT called and said, we don't have a full-time job, but if you'd like to be come and be a photographer slash reporter, come on down. So I thought, well, I've done this radio thing, so I'm going to try television. So lucky me, I got to come to TV. Do you remember the very first story you covered? Oh, so it was my first day, and the news director comes along and says, go get an MOS. I'm like, okay. And then quietly, I look around, and I'm like, what <laughs> is an MOS? MOS? <laughs> well, it's a man on the street interview. Just go interview people. Right. Oh, okay, I can do that. Did you know that first day, that first week, that first month, this is what I want to do? Absolutely. But it was mostly behind the camera. So? KOB had an opening as a consumer reporter. But that wasn't home. KOAT called me up and said, we'd like you to come back and anchor our morning news. And she was thrilled. But soon after, KOAT had to hire a new main anchor, or for the first time ever in New Mexico, two main anchors. Johnny will share the anchor desk with one of Albuquerque's brightest TV journalists, Mary Lynn Roper. They brought me up from the morning news, brought Johnny out of semi-retirement, and boom, we were the first co-anchor team. Mary Lynn was only 24 years old, and Johnny was the legendary Johnny Morris. He was immediately welcoming and just comfortable, and it's kind of like, okay, here we go, let's do this together, and we rocked it. We never lost a rating no. period. <laughs> I mean, it was it was just fantastic. Then, months later, the story that thrusted Mary Lynn into the national spotlight. First day after the takeover here at the state penitentiary revealed what an ugly, ugly scene it was in there. You know, the next 36 hours were just horrific, uh, mind-numbing, scary. If you cooperate with officials, if you're an informant, if you're a snitch, you are in danger of your life. 33 inmates lost theirs. A bloody, deadly prison riot at the state pen in Santa Fe. And in the middle of all the killings, a possible offer to negotiate a peaceful end involving Mary Lynn. Came up to me, state police commissioner, and said, some of the inmates are saying that they want to air their grievances to a member of the press, and they'll release a couple of guards, a couple of hostages. So are you willing to go talk to them? And I'm like, absolutely. So they got into a car and started driving right toward the prison riot. And they turn the lights on, the gate goes up, we leave all the rest of the press behind. I'm feeling like pretty <laughs> special. Mary Lynn, the only member of the local and national media in that vehicle. You could hear things, you could smell things, you could see the smoke billowing out of the windows. Um, to the right, I distinctly remember, I could see the negotiations going on and the inmates had their bandanas on and um, all this activity was going on. They had me sign um, a release that basically said that my heirs wouldn't uh, sue the state. Remember, this had been going on for hours. Dozens were already dead, but they didn't go in. Somebody saved my life that day, Doug, because we were ready. Now that I know what I know about what happened, right. I'd, I would have been dead within mo moments. 33 did die, all prisoners. Action 7 News. Good evening, I'm Johnny Morris. And I'm Mary Lynn Roper. Then, five years later, another career move. I applied. Applied to be KOAT's news director, but that would break up the state's 
highest rated news team. After six years, we haven't even glared at each other. Never mind. Had a, That's had right. Had a Maybe argument. we'll start now. Right. I hope not. No. Maybe we should get married. <laughs> <laughs> that would for sure ruin it. <laughs> Everybody I knew, whether it was relatives, friends, they all thought I'd lost my mind. Fortunately, the viewers stayed even after Mary Lynn was not their anchor. But while she was the news director, the station parted ways with a popular anchor. Talk about the story behind the bumper sticker. Pretty soon I'm driving along and I see this, I don't break for Mary Lynn Roper. And I'm like, what? And so there were thousands of them all over the state. Viewers upset a popular anchor was gone, blaming Mary Lynn, but. It took me a little while to finally find a little bit of the humor in it. At least they spelled my name right. And it wasn't Mary Roper, it was Mary Lynn right. Roper. Then another job opportunity, a bigger job. She'll be working with seven TV stations and two radio stations around the country. It kind of scared me, honestly. Mary Lynn was offered the job of VP of News, and in 1990, she was off to St. Louis with Pulitzer, which at the time owned KOAT. But three years later... We're walking out one day, my boss got his briefcases, and he's like, I don't know what we're going to do exactly with Albuquerque. And I'm like, I'd love to go home and be the GM. So they offered Mary Lynn the chance to come home and be KOAT's general manager. Did you have to think about that? No, it was wonderful. It was truly a homecoming. So how good was Mary Lynn at this job, like all the others she's had? Well, when Hearst Argyle Television bought KOAT in 1998, the new owners kept her as general manager. Well, to put it mildly, Mary Lynn was grateful and surprised. I've been remarkably blessed. There's no doubt about it, and I'm certainly well aware of that. 38 out of 41 years, Mary Lynn was able to start and grow her career in her native home state of New Mexico. It's pretty remarkable. In fact, our president of Hearst Television, Jordan Wortlieb, is quick to point out that it's highly unusual for a broadcaster to be able to actually stay in their home state and affect uh, the viewers uh, of the people that they really love. So let's recap and have some fun. I want you to rattle off all the jobs you've had. I was a janitor, a disc jockey, a news person, an assistant news director in radio, then I was a photographer, a reporter, a consumer reporter, a morning anchor, an evening co-anchor, a news director, vice president of news, general manager. Despite all that, there are regrets. Mary Lynn wishes she spoke Spanish, also maybe had more involvement in politics or maybe moving to a larger market. But the biggest regret, family time, quality family time with her son, Tim. Whatever you're doing, try to be in that moment because I do regret that. I think there was a lot of time I spent with Tim that I was busy in my brain thinking of something else. No matter the decade, hair continues to make headlines in TV news. It's often the first thing viewers notice and the first thing they either love or hate. And Mary Lynn remembers her many changing dues throughout her career here at KOAT. Some hair dues she loved, like this one, others she didn't. I always joke with you, but it's so true. You had amazing Hollywood hair. So <laughs> my favorite is the Farrah Fawcett look. That's mine too. I love that. But that one was easy for me to do. You know, it was the rollers and then upside down and push you back. Full so and voluminous. Full and I love that. <laughs> but that look was a bit too youthful for station management. When I first started co-anchoring with Johnny in the main sea, I was 24. So then management decided they needed to age me. Which meant this hair change. Mary Lynn calls it old lady hair. So you'll see the more, you know, bouffant and then the, I, I call it the helmet hair. It was her last on air style. So it was very like very, lots of hairspray and, and it was short and it didn't really move and I didn't really like it. She changed it right away when she left the anchor desk to become news director. And you know, Christine, something else Mary Lynn shared with me. Often she found it frustrating that viewers seemed to care more about her hair, her appearance, than the actual work she was doing. Right, she told me the same thing. There's nothing, of course, like the rush of breaking that big story. Right. But Mary Lynn told me people reached out to her more about her appearance mm -hmm. than the news that she was covering. But it was a reality back then, a time Mary Lynn emerged from paving a new trail for women. I would break a major story. I'd be running around the newsroom. It'd be so exciting. And I was an anchor at the time. And uh, I'd, so I'd go out and I'd anchor and then the phones would ring and, and or I'd get a letter and it was inevitably about my hair, whether they liked it, they didn't like it, too long, too short, too whatever. But how Mary Lynn Roper looked on air was the last thing on her mind. And it was like, I'm a journalist, I just broke a major story, so it was disheartening. It was a scenario Mary Lynn was no stranger to in a newsroom in the 1970s when a woman's news judgment was often secondary to her appearance. 
I got this great news tip. I'm in the middle of the newsroom, I'm so excited. And the assignment desk then assigned it to a male reporter and I got assigned to the Rose Garden Show. The memory is as vivid as these roses at the Botanic Garden in Albuquerque, a fitting place to reminisce how newsrooms were for women back then. Did you find that early on in your reporting career that you were assigned a lot of lighter stories like that? Yes, I think at the time it was like, all right, we have these women in the newsroom, we're not sure what to do with them. So yeah, we got all the fluff, the, the easy stories, the ones that were features, the ones that were lovely little whatever. The snub shaped Mary Lynn's determination to be a front runner for women in the workplace. After all, she watched her fellow female pioneers break the proverbial glass ceiling on national television. Diane Sawyer. I mean, how can you not say absolutely fabulous things about her? Well, certainly Barbara Walters. Okay. Let's face it, yeah. she was a front runner and the first co-anchor, I think, female co-anchor. Mary Lynn herself would eventually become the first ever female co-anchor in New Mexico. Jody Morris was a very experienced anchor and they put me next to him in order to win the ratings. And when we did, we never lost a rating period. But their first newscast didn't come without an interesting practice round. We were doing our thing, practicing, and all of a sudden a consultant said, well, you guys need to switch seats. And I'm like, why do we need to switch seats? And Johnny's like, why? Well, because she's in the power seat and he needs to be in the power seat. Now, I don't know what my response today would be, but back then I was 24 and I'm like, okay, I guess I give up the power seat. Soon enough, Mary Lynn would sit on a power seat of her own when another female first came knocking on her door. I wanted to be the news director and so I got that opportunity and being the news director means you run the newsroom. Years later, during her time as VP of News at Pulitzer Broadcasting, another entrance turned heads. It was 1990. One day I wore a nice slack suit and um, the executive assistant, Betty Nicole, came up to me at the end of the day and said, uh, did anybody say anything to you? And I'm like, about what? About your slacks. So about a week later, I did the same thing, wore a different you know, pair of slacks. And uh, Betty said, still nothing? I said, no, nobody said anything to me. So it was so much fun because about a week later, here came Betty in slacks, and I thought, baby, here we go. Mary Lynn returned to the land of enchantment to become the first female general manager of a TV station in New Mexico. She'll never forget what her then four-year-old son Tim said to her in the car as she drove him and her nephews. Mimi, Mimi, my family calls me Mimi. Mimi, Mimi, what's it like to be the general manager of KOAT? And I say, well, it's just so fabulous. I, I get to work with the group's world's greatest people. And Tim looks at me, and he looks at me, and he goes, you're the boss? And I said, yes, I am, Tim. And he said, hmm, I thought only men's were bosses. The story amuses Mary Lynn to this day. As the first female general manager, it's like, well, is that different than any other male general manager? And the reality is, I think it is to an extent because there's different sensitivities and, and different things that are near and dear to me. Including equality. When I think of when I started at KOAT in 1977 and what the newsroom looked like then, and there were three women that I can think of, and now I would say that the majority of the employees in the newsroom are women. And we know today Mary Lynn's influence for young women has endured. Just last year, a woman at Sandia Resort approached her. And she says, are you the Mary Lynn Roper? And I'm like, well, I, I don't think there's another one, so yes, <laughs> I guess. So she says, well, I have to tell you this story. So what she told me was her mother was pretty much a feminist and she wanted a Barbie doll and her mother's like, Barbie. So she let her pick her out a, ball, a, a doll, but she said, pick somebody that you can want to grow up to be like. So she said, so I went shopping with my mom and I ended up with a Mary Lynn Roper doll. And I'm like, you had a Mary Lynn Roper doll? She said, yes, I still have it. It's one of my treasures. A memory Mary Lynn herself will treasure knowing she has left an everlasting imprint for generations of women. Whether you're thinking about being a journalist or anything else, I would just say believe in yourself. So I just love that story about the Mary Lynn Roper doll. It goes to show how much of an icon she is and, of course, an incredible woman who achieved so many firsts. She has been recognized time and time again for her hard work. Nancy Laughlin shares with us some of the honors she's received. Mary Lynn Roper didn't just read a teleprompter. She's a journalist, an award-winning one. This year, she was inducted into the New Mexico Broadcasters Hall of Fame. You exemplify the values our colleagues strive to live up to every day integrity, fairness, mentorship.
President of Hearst Television, Jordan Wortlieb, and Vice President Mike Hayes made the trip to Albuquerque to honor her. This was her second induction. The first came in 2005, when Maryland was honored for being part of the Action 7 News team. Their ratings were through the roof, never losing a ratings period, and oftentimes being the number one rated late night ABC newscast in the nation. In 1981, she received a national award called the IRE, the Distinguished Investigative Reporting Award, for her coverage of the New Mexico State Pen Riot. And all you know, Dr. Barry Ramo, Mary Lynn hired the prominent doc and started the award-winning Health Beat franchise. As general manager, she helped create the New Mexico Children's First Project to improve the lives of our kids. Mary Lynn received national recognition for that, winning a Service to Children Award in 1996. In 2008, she was named New Mexico Broadcaster of the Year. And in 2013, Mary Lynn was honored with an American Advertising Federation of New Mexico silver medal for her contributions to local advertising. Mary Lynn has impacted many people over the years, and you may recognize some of these faces. Hi, Mary Lynn. Greetings from Dallas. I've been working here in my hometown for almost 11 years now, and I want you to know that I reached this lifelong goal because you were in my life. The way you ran KOA T7 prepared me not only to do well here in DFW, but to excel. Thank you for everything. When I first walked into your news director office at KOA T in the spring of 1983, your, uh, your smile was great, it was infectious. And I didn't know it was a lifetime of friendship at that moment. From day one, I just felt your genuineness, your selflessness, your pride in the product of which you were in charge, and boy were you. It made me realize that I was highly privileged to be part of a team which had and still maintains enormous momentum. The broadcast business in New Mexico and across the country, by golly, is a better place because of you. There's no question. You can join the conversation right now on social. Head over to Facebook and leave your comments for Mary Lynn. Mary Lynn has accomplished a lot, and she's lost a lot, too. I sat down with Mary Lynn to talk about one of the worst days of her life, the day her mother was killed. This is a story about heartbreak. To say it was tragic would be an understatement. A story about the power of forgiveness. She could have hung up on me, but she didn't. She immediately said she was sorry. And the journey to give it to someone who killed your mother. She walked outside of our house in order to get into a vehicle, and a drunk driver came along and hit her. October 12, 1973, 3.30 in the afternoon, right in front of her Raton home, 41-year-old Joyce Brunelli Roper was badly hurt. I got to the emergency room and the place was packed with, you know, concerned people from Raton. Mary Lynn Roper was only 19. Did you get to talk to her at all or no. she just... No, I mean, she died maybe 15 minutes after I got there. The rest of Mary Lynn's immediate family, including her father, was traveling. So she had to tell them what happened. Well, it was a horrible Friday night. A teenager in grief, she blamed herself. That day, Mary Lynn agreed to help a friend. So she switched her shift at the radio station where she was working. Her mother worked there also and wanted to spend time with her daughter, so she switched her shift too. For the longest time, that really, really bothered me because had I not switched schedules, my mother wouldn't have been home at the time, therefore she wouldn't have been walking out the door, she wouldn't have been hit by the drunk driver. It took me a long time to, like, I don't know, forgive myself for that. Back then, Mary Lynn's family had hoped for justice. They did not get it. Her blood alcohol content was a .35. So you know how extraordinarily uh, drunk you are at a .35. <laughs> so for years, I mean, the initial response was I was extraordinarily angry, completely freaked out, vengeful. Uh, it was hurtful to me when the sentencing, initial sentencing, was a 60-day day evaluation. I'm like, 60 days is like nothing. Yeah. And then that's what happened. It was a... a the probation after that. So that... For killing your mother? Yes, a 60-day sentence in the state penitentiary for evaluation. So that was just, you know, adding really honestly salt into a wound. After the sentencing, Mary Lynn began what would be an impressive career in TV journalism. So as the years went on, using some of my investigative reporting skills, I kind of kept track of where this woman was. 
and why I did that, I'm not really quite sure. I was always just kind of curious, like, what's her life like? Where is she? What's she doing? Finally, she picked up the phone. On the 40th anniversary of my mother's death, October 12th, I knew that she was back in Raton. So I called her. And I said, hi, this is Mary Lynn. She obviously knew who I was. And I said, this is not a mean-spirited conversation. I don't, I don't mean it to be anything except a conversation. I just want to talk to you. And she was very immediate in saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. She said it once. She said it 20 times. Um, it wasn't a long conversation, but truthfully, it was a healing conversation. One of the things I asked her is, are you still drinking? And she said, no, I got the cure, but it was a horrible way to get it. This woman, who had taken so much from Mary Lynn, from her family, had asked for forgiveness. I, I told her, I said, well, that's really up to the dear Lord, but as far as I'm concerned, you know, I'm sure that you've had many days of many years of regret. So as far as I'm concerned, yes, I'm willing to forgive you. Mary Lynn has no regrets about that call. It's such a personal journey that you have to decide to do that if you do it in your own terms and your own time frame. I mean, it took me 40 years, but I'm glad I did it. I'm glad I had the conversation. I feel more at peace. Though decades without her mother has passed, Mary Lynn believes her mom is still very much here. I mean, there's lots of things that I, I wish I could have shared with her. A lot of laughter, a lot of whatever, but I, I call me crazy. But I've often thought she was able to do more for me up above, directing a little traffic down here than she could have done for me here. Um, so I feel like she's still here, and um, I'll always miss her. Mary Lynn wants New Mexicans to know there is help if you're grieving. She says you can get through it with counseling, not over it, but you'll get some help to get through it. And as we all welcome fall with hot air balloons and beautiful colors, this is a reflective time of the year for Mary Lynn. My mom was just a sweetheart. She thinks of a woman who inspired her to achieve so much. With her soft femininity behind that was, you know, a fierceness that, you know, can catapult people to great things. Mm -hmm. Mary Lynn credits her mother, Joyce Brunelli Roper, for the next step. And knowing that I'm retiring, I'd like to think that uh, she'd be proud. In what's been a long journey of handling heartache, as well as finding and offering forgiveness. It was such a tough thing for her to talk about. I felt honored to sit down with her and learn a little bit more about her mother. And Mary Lynn's mother's death really encouraged her to fight for tougher DWI laws in New Mexico. She even helped develop an app here at KOAT that encouraged people to find a safe ride home. And we say it all the time, she fights she for change. And you may have noticed she's back on TV from time to time when she has something on her mind. This is a community comment. When something has KOAT's general manager, Mary Lynn Roper, heated, she is back on air. It's a great time to be a criminal in Albuquerque. Calling it out. Here's just a sample of crime in one day. It's heavy police activity in northwest Albuquerque. You keep your hands behind your back and stop moving! People were running for their lives on Montgomery after a gunfight erupted. Police say at least three people were firing at each other from Morningside Drive. Crime happens, sometimes the criminal gets caught, and then they're released from jail. It's when I'm amped up, when I have the emotion, when I'm like, you got to be kidding me, is when I get inspired to do a community comment. Her most powerful or maybe effective community comment was regarding the Bernalillo County District Attorney requesting additional funding this year. When it looked like the legislature may not approve that money, Mary Lynn spoke up. I'm wearing red today because I'm seeing red, meaning I'm angered and you should be too. She called on viewers to reach out to their legislators and press for more money for the DA to help get a handle on this crime crisis. Well, you all responded big time. Lawmakers said they got hundreds of calls after Mary Lynn's call to action. In the back of my mind, I'm thinking, well, it's going to be kind of embarrassing if nobody calls. But the phones rang off the wall. End of the day, in my opinion, the legislature did the right thing and the DA got the funding. So, you know, I think that it was very rewarding that the viewers responded mm -hmm. and uh, just makes me happy. It's just one more element of why I am so proud of the state. She also used this platform to go after APD and Albuquerque's mayor for their response or lack of after a little girl was allegedly being prostituted by her parents. Well, thank God the nurse called the attorney general's office and not APD. 
you should let Mayor Keller know how you feel about all of this. The mayor picks the chief of police. She urged people to quit smoking. I truly believe had I not quit smoking, I'd be dead today. Even letting us in on her personal life, saying it was one of the hardest things she had ever done. I hope a week from Wednesday, I can thank all of you for setting a New Mexico record for voter turnout. And telling New Mexicans to get out and vote, reminding us that this is a privilege and a right in this country. It's been very rewarding for me to do my community comments. I, you know, I, I, I try not to do them often, and so it's not like, oh, Mary Lynn, what's she talking about now? But I like being able to stomp around a little bit and say, hey, guys, let's pay attention here. Mary Lynn's impact on our state is evident. Here are some things people from our community wanted to share about her legacy. Mary Lynn uh, is somebody who solves problems, so I expect her to be somewhere solving important problems that she cares about uh, for this city and state. And I stand uh, with all of us in Albuquerque uh, thanking you for your contributions, thanking you for your leadership, thanking you for your care and your concern, your persistence, and the wonderful role model that you have been for both men and women in this city and in this state. Congratulations. Uh, like most folks in Albuquerque, I grew up watching Mary Lynn on television. On the news set with Johnny Morris seems like a very long time ago. Hers is a very unique story. Um, and it's, it's, it's an exciting story. And it shows what you can do with intelligence, determination, and grit. Um, and I think Mary Lynn has shown all of those qualities in her career, both at KOAT and corporately. When we went up to Santa Fe and we were, we were fighting for resources for this community, um, it was Marilyn Roper that stepped up and really uh, put her voice behind those efforts. And um, it, it takes a certain amount of courage to do that. And you don't find it very often. And somebody with that strength and that fortitude is, is, is just makes you proud to be from New Mexico. And I wish her all the best in retirement. Mary Lynn has always had uh, not only great journalistic insight, but she has a lot of courage. Uh, she shows that in the editorials that she does. Uh, she showed that in directing the newsroom. And she showed that in taking on some fights uh, over public access, uh, including a couple that we have going on right now. And I think in every conversation about those issues, over the years, she has always said, Kent, we need to fight the good fight. Mary Lynn has met a ton of celebrities throughout her career, including Barbara Walters, and we both went to a dinner together where we met and hung out with George Clooney. And Mary Lynn was actually the one who took this pic of us, and I am forever grateful, <laughs> by the way. I can see why it's a fantastic <laughs> photo. Hanging out with celebrities, I guess, can be a perk yeah. of the job. And there was another happy day for Mary Lynn back in the 80s when she got a chance to play a game of softball with some famous TV stars. It was a blast. It was a baseball game Mary Lynn Roper will never forget. You can see from the stands, it was packed. In 1981, the stars of the hit show Happy Days came to Albuquerque for some friendly competition. Okay, so here's some right, pictures so here of some are. baseball Mary Lynn. Game, yes. And tell us about that game. Well, it was a blast because Happy Days was coming to town, and mm -hmm. of course, Happy Days in the 80s was huge. Yeah. Mary Lynn and other local celebrities took part. You can see her in this video taking a swing and running to first base. And this photo says it all. Ron Howard, Opie, <laughs> swinging me around. Okay, wait, how did you get to this point where he was in your, you were in his arms? You know, it was just one of those things everybody was having a good time and he picked me up. What's oh, going I was on trying here? to give him a little kiss, maybe. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. No she says the energy of that day will always stick with her. They were so up and it felt yeah. just like they were your next door buddies. You know, you grew up watching them, you watched them a lot, so, yeah. you know, there was the personalities. And it was such a good time. It was just a very up, happy, sure. great day. I don't remember who won. She says some details don't matter. I wanted to talk to Mary Lynn about the state of journalism, fitting for us to do it on a golf course as we both play quite a bit. Here's how it all played out. Oh, yeah. Right down the pipe, huh? So the cameras start rolling, and here we go.
Let's go. Nice drive. <laughs> so I was I was thinking about some of your favorite quotes that you always talk about in the newsroom, right? Right. Never despair. Never despair. When in doubt. When in doubt, don't. don't. Right. And it works out here too, doesn't it? Absolutely. Because the never despair is you hit this horrible shot. Yeah. You have this good game going and you're like, <sighs> but it's like never despair because then you can pull off something amazing. You can chip something in. Let's hit that golf ball. Okay. So you're this great athlete in high school. Yeah. I've seen the yearbook, by the way. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> but you didn't think you were going to play this sport? No. You know, I loved sports. I was most athletic, captain uh -huh. of the teams, but no, I never thought I'd get to play golf. And the reason is, is that I, where I came from, and probably it's true anywhere, is there's the, at least my perception was only the rich kids played golf. Uh. And I was certainly not one of those rich kids. Now I play it, not because I'm rich, but because I realize that that's not true. So now I, I love the game. It's one of those things that you can play when you're older. I don't play basketball anymore. And, uh, and it's just so fantastic. Okay, chip in time, look out. Nice. Go in. Ooh. Close. So we better talk a little shop, don't you think? I just said I never think of anything serious out here, but we'll play okay. golf and we'll talk a little shop. But I'm just curious with with your storied career in journalism. What do you think the importance of journalism is? Well, it's the First Amendment, and there's a reason why our forefathers said it's the First Amendment. It's uh, protecting the people's right to know. I think it's the underpinnings of a free society. It's, it's, it's extraordinarily important. I can't think of anything much more important except, I don't know, mama and apple pie. It's, it's, it's the First Amendment. You smoked it. Smoked it. Did you wave when you went past me? <laughs> Perfect. So I told him it was okay to beat the boss. <laughs> fell off of that. Oh, this is going to be good. Oh, but look! Get in the hole. Hey, I'd rather be lucky than good. Oh, that is good. So we talked about the importance of journalism. What do you think the future of journalism looks like right now? Well, there's certainly a lot of discussion about whether you can trust the media and all of that. I think the biggest thing is there's always going to be an extraordinary need for it. People want to be informed. How else can they make good decisions? You just have to be careful of where you're getting your information from. I agree. Make that putt. Got it. Bingo. <laughs> Easy game, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> nice putt. I'm glad I don't do this for a living. <laughs> <laughs> nice putt. Par three, 155. 155. All right. Let's see how this goes. What do you think of this? this fake news that gets tossed around, especially on social media. I mean, it's used all the time, but not just calling it fake news, but there's, I mean, people attacking the media. What's your take, Ben, on that? Well, we're supposed to be mellow out here on the golf course. You start talking about fake news and that gets me amped up. I find it insulting. We are not fake news. We inform New Mexicans and, and I'm proud of it. You know, my career, my, my mantra has always been we probe, investigate, reveal. And at the end of the day, I think New Mexicans are better for what we've done and will continue to do. <laughs> That's what happens when you talk politics on the course. <laughs> talk about <laughs> fake news. It's gotta go. How about bias in the newsroom? Because that's something that gets tossed around all the time too. And you've talked about this a little bit. It's human nature, right? That people have different biases. Well, they have their own opinion, but I think in the editorial process, by the very nature of how it works, there's checks and balances of that. I mean, Todd, you, you live it every day. I've thought about this for decades. When you think about the editorial process and you look around that editorial table, uh -huh. there's people that are Republicans, Democrats, Independents. I don't know how you would get an agenda through. What you get through is a vetted thought process of what the public needs to know or should know or, or potentially cares about. So when you think about a story, I mean, I think I'm very proud of the fact that it's a collective wisdom. And collectively, we decide, all right, that's a story we want to probe on. That's a story we're going to go after. Got it. <laughs> great way to finish, huh? That was fun. It's been great. That was fun. Thank you. Thank you for doing this. Yes.
It was my pleasure. Thank you. You can imagine that after 41 years, Mary Lynn has touched many lives, some of whom you may remember. Mary Lynn, you took a chance on me when literally nobody else would. And for that, I owe you my career, my life. I am eternally grateful. The way I see it, I am your legacy. You were like a mother to me at KOAT. And for that, I just can't thank you enough. You know, you've left this incredible legacy here in the Albuquerque market. Uh, you've done and achieved so many successes and you know, taking the station constantly and consistently to number one. Uh, winning the uh, the ratings wars and uh, I think setting the standard for many of us who worked for you in the newsroom, perhaps some of the highest journalistic standards uh, for this market and maybe across the country and and I'm grateful for that. How do you say goodbye to a legend? I think it's impossible, so I'm not even going to try. I don't want to say goodbye, but what I do want to say is thank you for all the lessons you taught me. Operation Homefront, I suppose our relationship started there and there could not have been a greater foundation than watching somebody in such a pivotal position in our community take a hold of something, make it happen on that TV screen and help so many people. And again, maybe Mary Lynn is the face of Channel 7, but she is indeed the backbone of this community. Well, Sky 7 is just about as well known as Mary Lynn, and that might be because it's been here almost as long as she has. Mary Lynn hopped in for a ride, shares her memories of this powerful news gathering tool with meteorologist Eric Green. Here we go. You all know Sky 7. It's considered really a personality. It's part of the uh, anchor team. Uh, it's, it's better known than uh, a lot of us. Everybody knows who Sky 7 is, and uh, everybody loves Sky 7. But you probably don't know Mary Lynn's connection to this powerful news gathering tool. That was 1980, and ever since then, Sky 7 has been prominently there at the station where the newsies can just jump out the door and off we go for breaking news or anything else that we're doing. The first news helicopter in the land of enchantment. I had the honor of getting up in Sky 7 and doing the first live shot. Uh, it wasn't a particularly interesting story. As a matter of fact, it was, uh, it was just basic traffic report. But the whole point was we were first. From that day, she realized the importance of the unique perspective Sky 7 gives you. And years later, so did our competitors. They got choppers of their own, landing them in their parking lots and creating noise for their communities. Residents went to city council to ban all news helicopters from landing in the city. But Mary Lynn put up a fight. Our uh, neighborhood association actually has Sky 7 on the, its letterhead. They love us. Everybody around us loves us. We've been great neighbors. We've been sensitive to any noise issues or whatever. And so, you know, my big pitch to City Hall was that, you know, deal with the people that are complaining and, and, the, and the people that they're complaining about or the entities they're complaining about, complaining about, we're not it. It was a huge victory for me. In fact, one of uh, the better victories of my career. Having Sky 7 right outside our door provides a 20 minute advantage, allowing us to get to the story faster or to help those in need. Sky 7 has done some wonderful things over the years. We've helped uh, the authorities find missing people. Uh, we've been able to help the Santa Clara tribe understand how devastated their land was from the flooding. Creating clarity by giving perspective. Flying over Los Alamos, it really is up on a mesa, a, a tabletop. So and you can see why then everybody decided that that was a good place for when um, Oppenheimer and the gang were working on um, nuclear weapons. Our state is so vast and covering news over 160,000 square miles can be challenging. Hearst Television has been absolutely fantastic. They have. They have absolutely understood the need. But getting to these areas is only part of covering the story. Wonderful viewers will pick us up, and it's a huge advantage because, of course, they know the area. They know the mayor. They know the chief of police. They know whatever the incident is that we're coming in to cover. They're a great uh, leg up. 
give us the local knowledge. So I want to thank the viewers for doing that for all, for many, many years. Sky 7 has been a part of our blue skies for 38 years, but it hasn't always been the bright yellow you all love. Sky 7, the only permanent on-site news helicopter in the state. First in the air, first to the story. If you look back at the old Sky 7s, it's kind of a fun thing because they're little. They look like maybe a little mat. The graphic was not particularly impressive, but at the time, we thought it was the coolest thing that there was. And so every rendition of Sky 7 has gotten a little bit better. And our current version shows Mary Lynn's love for New Mexico. Oh, I want it to be the state flag. Think about that, the beautiful yellow and the, the red, it's striking. With the blessing of the Zia Pueblo, we proudly fly their ancient tribal symbol over our state. When the symbol is, is used in that way, it gives us a lot of honor, or it gives us a lot of pride. Many memories, but Mary Lynn's favorite? When we went up to my hometown of Raton, it was part of the Coats for Kids drive. First of all, I could see my town from the air, which, you know, I never thought I'd ever be able to do that as a kid. Uh, and then when I looked out and I saw all these little kids so excited, jumping up and down that Sky 7 was coming in, that was quite a homecoming, and so I would say that's my favorite. You can join the conversation right now on social. Head over to Facebook and leave your comments for Mary Lynn. And Shelly and I know how busy election night can be. We've been working them together since 2008. And when I talked to Mary Lynn, she talked about what it was like to cover politics back then and how much she enjoyed it. While most of you know Mary Lynn from her 40 plus years at KOAT, her family roots reach even farther as a New Mexican. On my mother's side, it's seven generations that I know of. Uh, when you go through the small little town of Watrous, when you're on I-25 going north right there by Las Vegas, Sam Watrous was my great, great, great grandfather. So it's steeped on that side way back. And it's that deep connection to our state that sparked Mary Lynn's love of politics. 45 years ago when I first started covering news to now, our politicians are very accessible to the press and I think that's fabulous. And you know, they could be putting up walls and they don't. And to some extent, I think that's just the nature and culture of New Mexico, which is one of the reasons why I love it so much. Tonight, New Mexico will follow the election on television. And election nights hold some of her most memorable moments covering New Mexico. On election night, more New Mexicans turned to one television news source than any other station. For one in particular. Security. There were like nine guys out there and me, and I wasn't even thinking about it. And in a break, I was walking down the hall and somebody says, well, What's that like to be out there with nine men? I was like, hmm, never really thought about it, which is probably a good thing. But yes, we've come a long way. Not realizing at the time the path she was paving for women in the industry. You know, it's very interesting when I look back because I never set out to be like, I want to be the first woman for this, 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 and this. I was just doing my thing and as luck would have it, that thing was I wanted the next step, the next step, the next step. Those steps eventually leading her to where she is today. But she's never lost her passion for reporting, which we saw once again in 2008. So 34 of your 36 years, I was able to watch you report, observe, and uh, it's been quite a run. One of the biggest honors of my career was when Senator Pete Domenici asked me to do his last official interview. Uh, when you think about it, he could have asked anybody. He was nationally known, of course, uh, so it could have been the national press, it could have been anybody in New Mexico, and I was no longer on the air. I was the general manager, so when the senator asked me to do his last interview, it was so touching and such an honor. And I, and I love that interview because it was like old friends just talking. Senator Domenici was grateful as well. For you to take time off, but to do this yourself is uh, very special to me, and I thank you for that. One of the most powerful moments she recalls from that interview? A lot of people have referred to you as St. Pete. Mm. When's the first time you heard that, and how did it make you feel? That's the one that sticks out in my mind, no, because know. it kind of took him, by, took him by surprise, I guess, maybe. And his answer may have taken many by surprise, too. I'm telling you the truth. It did not make me feel great. It didn't make me feel, it made me feel a little queasy. I didn't, didn't like it. I thought they it was overdoing it. Look, uh, only somebody else knows whether you're a saint or a sinner. Uh, so I'd rather that I not be judged either way. Okay, here you got 
the cowboys. As we walked through the roundhouse, pieces of art reminded her of the great history of New Mexico. Whenever I see a roadrunner, I kind of feel like it's bringing me good luck that day. Something anyone who talks to Mary Lynn quickly realizes she truly treasures. I salute the flag. Even fondly recalling the words she and her classmates said each morning, reciting the pledge to the New Mexico state flag in grade school. What I loved about it was at some point it was uh, and perfect friendship among united cultures. And we said that every morning, and perfect friendship among united cultures. And I just think that's so perfect. It is the essence of New Mexico and, and what I love and what I cherish and what we can all be so proud of. She said it was those very words that helped her realize that in New Mexico, you can be anything you want. New Mexico is special. I believe that. I've lived it. 41 years at KOAT, 25 as general manager, leaving behind a legacy at this station. The community has come to expect a certain level from KOAT, not only in the news that we do every day, but how KOAT helps the community and is such a huge part of the community. I love the people that I work with and I know the culture of the station and I know that that's not going to change as I walk out the door. That culture is it's just deep. Uh, it's steeped in tradition and it's going to continue. So what is next? She gets that infamous question a lot these days. Uh, people ask you uh, all the time. I've asked you jokingly, are you going to run for governor? Maybe not governor, but do you see yourself in any way in retirement doing something publicly? I have honestly toyed with the idea of running for some political office. I don't really think I'll do that. The answer really is, I don't know. But hopefully there'll be something where I can still help New Mexicans. I'd like to think that I have helped New Mexicans. And, you know, I'm, I'm not over yet. I'm not done yet. Leaders in our community often talk about Mary Lynn Roper. Tonight, we share their comments. I was always respectful of her opinions, especially when she would come out on her own and say, look, this is what needs to happen. Why don't you get out there and vote? Or why don't you get out there and make a difference? Or telling the legislature, hey, let's move along. The New Mexicans deserve more. I really appreciated how honest she was. Um, and I think most New Mexicans really appreciated that, and we're going to miss her. Mary Lynn Roper has been amazing for New Mexico. She's uh, the heart and soul of New Mexico. She cares about New Mexico. And the most important thing the media does is connect New Mexicans with their communities. And she's been a great part of that tradition. She's a pioneer in the media area, and I just want to say congratulations, and I know she's going to keep doing in her next chapter the right thing for New Mexico. Mary Lynn has been a force for good in our community. Mary Lynn blazed a trail for so many aspiring journalists in New Mexico. Generations of young people will look to the example she set, not only in her professional field, but also in the way she gave back to the community. The best profession in the world is to be a politician. And I think you have a political future. So everybody knows you, likes you, and you've got the right stuff. So forget this retirement stuff. Think about the next political race. And I hope that whoever thinks about running against you doesn't do it because you wouldn't win. You remember that round of golf that we played? Well, after that, we busted out an old yearbook and photo album. I found out Mary Lynn was not just athletic, but she was popular too. Take a look at some of these pictures. I found these and I wanted to show our viewers some things and I found this very interesting. <laughs> queen. Queen. Mary Lynn. How cool is that? You're voted homecoming queen or prom queen? Prom queen. Wow. Prom queen. That's it was, fantastic. it was, it was, I was surprised. And then this was the other one that I spotted that I thought was so cool. <laughs> So this is most athletic, right? Correct. That's Gilbert and myself. Well, it's something that has carried over into her adult life. Oh, yeah. You saw her on the golf course, but right. what about riding horses? Yeah, she did this media race for charity two years. Uh, by the way, won both times. What I love about this is that when we're going across the finish line, oh, you no. can see that I'm way ahead is that and I'm, I'm waving to the crowd. Also very skilled on the slopes. That's Mary Lynn with her former co-anchor, Johnny Morris. Later in her career, she started the Kids Learn to Ski and Snowboard program, helping all New Mexicans hit the slopes at a discount. It occurred to me one day when I was skiing that I see a bunch of New Mexicans serving the hamburgers and not skiing. Hmm. Uh, and it was like, well, that's just wrong, but we're a poor state. So how do you get that exposure to learn to ski 
and then it becomes a lifelong, wonderful adventure. She partnered KOAT with Ski New Mexico and got a discount for kids in New Mexico. It makes my heart happy when I see those little itty bitties. So excited. Uh, speaking of hitting the slopes, Mary Lynn has led KOAT to multiple wins in the Media Ski Challenge. Ski Challenge. We're not competitive or anything, are we, Todd? <laughs> yeah, that shines through, doesn't it? Yeah, that? well, the yeah, annual Media Ski Challenge. Yeah. It's a big deal. We all show up in our yellow coats and we're ready to roll and uh, we're the defending champs. So you guys keep that going, even though I'm uh, not going to be a KOAT. Maybe I'll still ski with you. Can you tell who these two people are? Well, of course, that's Marilyn, but this guy, that's Chief Meteorologist Joe Diaz. He's worked with Marilyn at KOAT longer than anyone. He started as a reporter and weekend weatherman. Tonight, he shares some of his fond memories. Well, Joe Diaz is here tonight to answer that question as he continues his series of special reports. Okay, so I started at the station in September of 1979, and the team of Johnny Morris and Mary Lynn Roper, they've only been around for a few months, so it was just kind of getting going. She was very, very cordial and nice to me. And I was talking to people at the station. I go, well, we're a number one station, right? And they go, well, we were a number one station. We don't know what we're going to be when the big rating book comes out because uh, we don't know how the audience is going to take to this new co-anchor team. Well, when the uh, rating book came out in November, they were a solid number one. There's one story that I recall. We had this big shot producer who moved in, and he'd worked in big markets like New York and Chicago. But he says to me one time, he goes, it's amazing what she does. I mean, she will hear a story. She'll ask questions about it. She'll make suggestions about maybe how that story can be expanded. She asks what other stories we have in the broadcast, and she'll figure out a way to line it up. And he goes, I've never seen anyone in my entire career with that kind of good, speedy news judgment. So, later on, when she went from being an anchor to being my boss, I totally got it. She's not going to be just missed by people in the building. She's going to be missed by New Mexicans. When you think about all she's done with the coats for kids, when you think about what she's done to promote the ski industry in New Mexico, when you think about what she's done to be an advocate for the people of New Mexico, you know, Mary Lynn, you know, to me, she's more than a boss. She's more than a, a former anchor. Mary Lynn Roper, Marilyn Roper is a New Mexico treasure who has woven herself into the very fabric of our state. And we're all better off for it. Marilyn and I are both native New Mexicans. So when she first hired me nearly 20 years ago, that was one of the connections we both hold dear to our hearts. We sat down to talk about how living in the state for most of her life has influenced her decision making throughout her career. Describing New Mexico. Friendly, warm, beautiful, blue skies. Like only someone who has spent most of her life in our state could. Welcoming, um, a melting pot, my home. Sitting with Mary Lynn at her kitchen table, the architecture and carefully chosen decor inside of her home reflects her style and love of our state. The Raton native also speckled the same distinctive appearance throughout her other home, the KOAT television station. From the outline of the Sandia Mountains on the background of the set, to the stacked stone symbolizing the layers of our mixed cultural heritage, and the bright yellow paint and Zia sun symbol proudly displayed on our helicopter and fleet of vehicles reflecting our state flag, Mary Lynn had an influential hand in the station's branding, always keeping New Mexico in mind. It's subtle sometimes, sometimes not so subtle, but we are New Mexico's television station. There is no doubt about it. Mary Lynn knows New Mexico. One of the things I'm really proud of is as a native New Mexican, I get us. Mm -hmm. At least I hope I get us. From food to art, and most importantly, people. It's her deep-rooted love, understanding, and compassion for the viewers that has kept her grounded throughout her success. It really doesn't matter how much money you have. It's your heart, it's your essence, it's your humanity, your civility to each other. That's what I absolutely love about New Mexico. Watching her grandmother, Margaret Roper, work with pride at Toys for Roy as the store's first clerk, Mary Lynn gained an appreciation for hardworking New Mexicans. Monetarily, we may not have many coins in our pocket, but in our heart, we are rich. With hardworking New Mexicans in mind, Mary Lynn launched several programs benefiting the community, 
her generous spirit always striving to not only inform, but enrich New Mexicans' lives. 29 years ago, she spearheaded one of the most recognizable charitable events in our state, Coats for Kids. New Mexicans answered the call to donate winter coats, and to date, more than 300,000 coats have been collected and distributed to children in need throughout the state. And in 2000, Mary Lynn expanded the station's charitable causes to include the annual school supply drive, gathering essential supplies for children in need so they can be successful in the classroom. Mary Lynn is always pushing to make New Mexico better. She makes no apologies for her high standards. She knows that she can be tough, but she won't ask more of her employees than she does of herself. She pushes to be the best, and everyone around her gets that. I don't know if you've heard this term before, but they, a lot of people that come and leave call it the KOAT boot camp. I love it. Because <laughs> you will get put through a lot, but by the time you leave, you can go anywhere. You've got to be proud of that. I think it's a it's a fabulous thing because, and you can see it in the faces when employees first start at KOAT, their eyes are kind of big, and it's like, you know, the the pressure is pretty t intense, and we expect a lot, and the employees rise to the occasion, and after a while, it's just like, well, that's what you do, of course. It's that same enthusiasm that guided Mary Lynn through a long, remarkable news career that she credits with the team around her. I think that we're a collective wisdom, and I can't say enough great things about the people that I've been blessed to work with over the years. Our KOAT family and loyal viewers feel the same about her. For more than 40 years, Mary Lynn has strived to make an impact in our lives. And even though she will no longer be walking through the doors of the station she worked so hard to build and sustain, she has no plans to stop working for New Mexico. I can't imagine myself retiring. I, I love New Mexico. I want to do something that helps New Mexicans. I'm not sure what that's going to be. Hopefully my phone will ring for something. But um, yeah, I, I, I definitely want to do something and hopefully use my skills to to make us better and climb that rank from 49th to 1st. I think one of the greatest things I admire about Mary Lynn, having worked at a lot of different TV stations, mm -hmm. is that she truly has done all of the jobs. Mm -hmm. She gets what it takes to get the news on the air every day mm -hmm. because she's done it all. And I just think that is so rare and something I've really appreciated working mm -hmm. with her. Sure. That's yeah. in-house, but outside the station, one thing I always get, Oh, you work at Channel 7. Isn't that where Mary Lynn works? Wasn't she the anchor there right. once? Wasn't she the news director once? Right. Everybody has a lot of admiration and respect for everything Mary Lynn does, as of course we all do here. Mm -hmm. I certainly do, having worked with her for 20 years, and I was mm -hmm. talking to her when I got to interview her, and said that one of the things I loved about her is that she is very forgiving. <laughs> and <laughs> if there's a mistake made, and we all make mistakes, mm -hmm. she's she can get riled up about it, and then it's over. Mm -hmm. It's just done. She lets it go, and you move on. By the next okay. day. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> We've talked about this, too. This is a celebration for Mary Lynn, what we're doing here, mm -hmm. but this is also sad. Yeah. It's Very, sad for yeah. New Mexico Very because sweet. this is a woman who was born and raised in New Mexico. Mm -hmm. She fights for New Mexicans, Absolutely. and she's the leader of a TV station in New Mexico. And hired every one of us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. just starting out, you know, it's so nice because I feel like I have so much more to learn in my career, and to hear all of her stories from beginning mm -hmm. to up to this point, so many stories to learn from, and it's just wonderful mm -hmm. to hear. Yeah, and I think we can all agree that Mary Lynn is tough, right? Yeah. And right. we respect that. Yeah. But man, she's got a good heart, too. Yeah, and I really always felt like she cares about all of us, and she cares about every single person watching our newscasts. Absolutely. Thank you for joining us to honor Mary Lynn Roper. And on behalf of everyone here at KOAT, congratulations, congratulations Mary Lynn. Mary Lynn.